Order. I thank the member and I call the member for the tribe. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I stand to strongly support this bill, the Medical Research Future Fund. And what this is about is creating a fund for medical research, initially $1 billion and eventually $20 billion. For the life of me, I cannot believe Labor is not just supporting this bill outright. The only time people ever become aware of such a need of a bill and medical research fund, I've found, is when there's a tragedy in the family or there's a tragedy in the community where someone finds out that all of a sudden a person has a rare disease, a rare illness. And you normally find when it, in my case, I found that in my electorate on a couple of occasions, and it's normally through seeing doctor after doctor and eventually coming across a medical specialist who realises this is what the illness is or this is what the disease is. And that's why I can't believe the Labor Party is, is not fully supporting this medical research fund bill. It, to me, it's a brilliant bill and with all these young people I see up in the, the gallery today, this is about you too, it's your futures, and it's about the futures of all Australians. And I go back to 2007 when I was in my office in Baronia and the, some parents come to see me, the, the Weber family, and they had a little boy called Jimmy Weber who lived in Beaconsfield, he was 12 years of age. And the parents actually couldn't tell me what was Jimmy's future with Jimmy in the room and, and the, so he asked Jimmy to leave and it soon became very apparent that he needed some urgent surgical, uh, urgent surgery. He had um, pressure on his optic nerve. The problem was that the anaesthetist didn't want to put him under because he had polyps in the throat and the, the danger was if they undertake the surgery he could die um, but if they do nothing he could go blind an awful situation for parents to, to be in. I actually said to the parents, I said, well, is there anything we can do? And they said, yes, the, there is. There's a, there's a drug. There's this miracle drug. And the drug was called Elopraze and was developed in the USA. And this is what we want to see. We want to see drugs like Elopraze developed in Australia. And that's what this fund is all about. And the drug was not available through the Therapeutic Goods Administration as it was undergoing evaluation. But Jimmy needed this medication absolutely urgently. But the mer uh, this medication is not cheap. I think it was between six and eight hundred thousand dollars per year. Uh, why is it so expensive? Because pharmaceutical companies um, need to get some return for doing this incredible research into um, drugs like Elaprase. And I approached the company Gemzyne, the, the, the CEO was Dan Brown, and I had a chat to him about can we put Jimmy on a, on a, a trial, there's a, a number of trials going on in Australia at the time for Hunter syndrome. And initially we did have some resistance, but eventually I congratulate uh, Gemzyne, and can I say to work with them compared to uh, many other pharmaceutical companies was a pleasure. They could see the common sense by putting Jimmy on the trial, and in return, I would do move heaven and earth to make sure we would get uh, Alapraise uh, listed. And the great news was that Jimmy did get the drug, and he's now um, doing fantastically in life. And the great news was too that all the other sufferers in Australia also had access to this drug, and also other ones, uh, similar ones called MPS1 and MPS2 from memory. Um, the side effects of Hunter's syndrome in severe cases, coarse facial uh, features, profound mental retardation, spasticity, aggressive behaviour, but the very worst case scenario is most, most of boys and most don't survive until the age of 20. And, I did have some parents in my electorate in officer who, once we had the drug approved, um, uh, did actually, at a function, tell me that their child 
died of Hunter's syndrome, but um, how grateful they were to know that he hadn't died in, in vain. And that was a great news story, and I congratulate also um, my colleagues at the time. We all signed a, a letter we presented to, to John Howard, and I believe um, our current Prime Minister Tony Abbott was the Health Minister, and under the Life Saving Drugs Program, uh, the ph Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme for the Treatment of Hunter's Syndrome, and the great news we got the drug. But the key point is here again, we come back to the Medical Research Fund. And, and I know the Treasurer has criticised for this at the time, but can I say the most important time in your life or someone's life is when they need help and assistance. And this potential benefits from this fund, um, personally, it's going to be astronomical to the families it helps in Australia, but also importantly overseas. Australia is a, a well-to-do country. And you normally find with our medical researchers do, who do such a fantastic job that they will naturally share, naturally share their breakthroughs with other countries because that's what scientists are about. They go into their field to help other, other people. Um, now, another example of a life-threatening drug um, was brought to my attention by um, Jenny Scott, who's the mother of Bianca Scott. Jenny lives in my electorate, and Bianca suffered, suffers from AHUS. And also met in my electorate young Holly Vanderlock, who also suffers from AHUS. In 70 per cent of cases, AHUS is associated with a genetic or acquired abnormality of a part of the immune system known as the complete system. This can lead to severe inflammation of the blood vessels and blood clotting that damages kidneys, causing them to fail. AHUS can occur at any age, with nearly half all people diagnosed age 18 and over. This disease is just a life-threatening in adults and as it is in children. Within one year of diagnosis, 64 per cent of patients with HUS will either tragically die, require dialysis or develop permanent kidney damage despite plasma exchange, which is very expensive. This paints a very bleak picture. But again, through medical research, there is a breakthrough, a drug called Solaris. When Jenny Scott, Bianca's grandmother, approached me about the capacity Solaris had to save her granddaughter's life, I knew it had to act because tragically Jenny's son died of the same illness. Again, as with Jimmy, I fought hard to have Solaris provided to Bianca and Holly. But can I say too, and I must congratulate all members of, of Parliament involved in this, and I, in particular my colleagues from Queensland and work with New South Wales Health Authorities, um, and they arranged for Bianca to receive the drugs she needs so vitally and in return eventually, and I congratulate Minister Peter Dutton, negotiations <coughs> with the company uh, saw a great outcome for all those sufferers in Australia. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Holly will be able to use this drug if she ever needs it, because now it's listed Solaris under the Life Saving Drugs Program. Again, this is a great example of medical research and why the coalition is so much behind having in place a fund which will, I have no doubt, make incredible breakthroughs in medical research in Australia and also in the world. We have to back our scientists. We have to back our researchers. Uh, we have great universities here in Australia and we need to give them all the support and all their medical research team the support too, and all scientists. A medical research fund benefits hospitals and health care providers. In that, they will be able to engage in active research to provide for more effective health care, have access to pioneering clinical trials, and clinical trials are so important, and attract pioneering health professionals. Presently, the Australian government only invests 0.075 per cent of our GP, GDP on health and medical research. This is just 64 per cent of the OECD average. 
And to me, we need to improve this. We need to greatly improve this. And that's, again, the beautiful thing about this fund. It will improve this. Economically, there are also benefits to our nation in that every $1 invested in health and medical research generates an average return of $2.17 in benefits to the nation. Naturally, Australians have uniquely an Australian approach to uh, medical concerns. And of course, when we have areas that need research like indigenous health problems, tropical infectious diseases or emerging health risks specific to our country, it makes sense for this research to be Australian-based. In conclusion, given all of this, I would hope that it is now very clear to the Labor Party to support the Medical Research Fund. In closing, I would like to use the words of Professor Christine Bennett, AO Chair of Research Australia. And I quote, investing in health and medical research is about better health and wellbeing, greater productivity and the stronger economy, and giving hope to people living with health problems for which research is the only hope. And I ask and recommend for any members of parliament, any members of parliament, to go to the rare voices functions when they have these in Canberra. And I congratulate um, um, Steve Irons for his great work he's done with this uh, group. And when you go there and meet the parents and you meet the children who are suffering, uh, who have rare illnesses, that's what this fund is about. It's helping those. So I very proudly support the Medical Research Future Fund Bill of 2015.